We're going to record as much of it as we can, and we'll make it available to people. But I want to tell you, if, if we can get a hold to this principle, our life will change. If we can get a hold to the principle that I'm going to talk about tonight, it is this principle that causes most people to fail. It's this principle that causes most people to fall short of living for God. And I want to talk to you about the subject of offense. Matthew chapter 18, verses 6 through 9 is where we're going to start at tonight. And we will also go to a couple of more passages of Scripture, and we will mix them together. But Matthew chapter 18, verses 6 through 9. We'll begin reading with verse 6. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Dear Lord, I thank you for this evening, for this group of people that's gathered here. Lord, I ask that as we bring forth your word, Lord, that it would be strengthening, that it would be nourishing, that it would be encouraging, that it would be correcting where necessary. Lord, that we would be able to draw some light and life from it. I ask it all in the holy and righteous name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. I want to talk to you, and as I said at the beginning, I believe this to be one of the most neglected subjects in the church today is the subject of offense. It gets talked about a lot, and I don't mean neglected from the aspect of it getting not talked about, but it does not get addressed correctly or succinctly or fully in the way that it's going to bring forth fruit. Matthew chapter 13 actually says, for they that hear the word, receive that word with joy, and obey it quickly. And then, because of no depth of root, by and by they're offended by the word. And that that word, the very word that is meant to bring forth fruit, is the very thing that turns a lot of people out of the way. It, they receive the word of God quickly. And they obey it quickly, but because they don't have depth of root, because there's not any uh, any depth or, or growth to them or any maturity to them to where there is depth of root, then the word of God by and by becomes offensive to them. The scripture here says, offense shall It puts it this way, it must needs come. And offense is going to come. But for those who are mature in the Lord, we need to understand two things. That when offense comes, you don't need to be the one that causes it. Number one, if you're mature in the Lord, you understand that. That he, he cares about it so much, he said, if your hand offends you, or your foot offends you, or your eye offends you, or frankly, any other body part, or any other action or any other thought process is offensive and causes ones to be offended, that we should rid ourselves of it. If it's our hand, cut it off. If it's a thought process in our mind, rid ourselves of that thought process. And in so doing, we'll find ourselves being able to enter into life, maybe somewhat maimed physically, 
but uh, not taking part in hellfire home. And so the Lord says offense is going to come, but the first thing he says is don't you be the one who offends. The other thing, the other side of that, as you mature in the Lord, you'll understand that not only do you not need to be the one who offends, is you need to be the one who's not offended. The Bible says, great peace are, have they that love thy law, and nothing shall by any means offend them. And so we find out that the person who loves the Lord and who loves his word and who is looking to obey his word, they're smart enough not to be the one who offends. The Bible said it would be better if a millstone be put around your neck and you be cast into the sea than it is to be the one who is offending someone on purpose. And we also understand that great peace have thee, they that love thy law and nothing will offend them. So two things you need to understand as you mature in the Lord is that all, although offense will come, don't let it come through you and don't let it come to you. It does not matter, Brother Chris, how much I try to offend you. If you don't take offense, you can't be offended. Offense has to be taken. I can get up early in the morning and attempt to offend Brother Chris. And the Bible says, woe unto me if I'm attempting to do that. But both of us have to be involved in that process for him to be offended. I have to come with offense, and he has to take offense with what I've either said or done. So that, that, that is one of the things you need to understand, that all the offense shall come. It does not have to come to you. Remember this, and learn this at whatever stage you are in the Lord. If you're a little one, learn it now. Because as you grow, it becomes harder to accept this principle and obey. Offense cannot be given if you don't take it. You know, the one who is still giving offense is still in danger of reaping the judgment of the Lord. But if we could just understand something today, that no matter what someone says, that no matter what someone does, you have the power to not be offended. And as you mature in the Lord, you'll understand that that is the place of security and the place of protection that the Lord has set up for all of us is we can keep ourselves from that place. I look back over my time around the church and I've seen men and women time after time after time. It's almost like Peter, you know, when the Lord said, you know, here's what's going to happen. And Peter's like, oh, no, Lord. No, that ain't so. I, I'm not going to participate in that. And I've seen people, I, I'm, I'm going to do this for the Lord and that for the Lord, and this for the Lord, and then you don't speak to them for two services in a row. And they drop off the face of the earth. And you don't see them for months. Maybe not even years. And you find out that at some point they got offended. And, 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 the, and the deal is, if you're looking to be offended, the church is a great place for that to happen to you. Because there's offense shall come. Uh, the word, especially the word of God gets presented every time we come to church. And the Bible says that Jesus is a stumbling block and a rock of offense to those that don't want to obey the gospel. So Jesus is an offense, and his very word is an offense, and people that are looking to be offended will find a way to be offended. But in identifying that, identifying the fact that you don't need to be causing offense, and you don't need to be taking offense, I want to read another passage of Scripture as to how uh, we ought to we ought to function when we come in contact with someone who has been offended. 
And I've not seen this particular passage of scripture used very often for this subject, but I'm going to attempt to do so. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 12 through 17 says this. Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. It is widely assumed to recognize that Paul uh, was writing and um, writing to the Jewish church at Jerusalem at the time, or, or Jewish church in general, but especially in Jerusalem uh, on the book of Hebrews. And, and when we look here, he's addressing specifically some things that there are people who are weak that there are people who are stumbling, that there are people who find themselves easily offended, and that those of us who have matured in the Lord to the point where we can be helpful to others, that at a time and a place where a lot of church people, Sister Renee, that you and I probably know, uh, good old church people have made it almost impossible for those who have been offended to come back to the Lord. And Paul here specifically is addressing, saying, hey, lift up the feeble hands and the, the knees. Lift up those that are somewhat crippled by offense and somewhat not able to function by offense. Make straight paths for their feet that they be walk, able to easily walk into a place of reconciliation with the Lord. And, and don't turn them out of the way. Don't make their... Don't make their coming back hard, but rather let them be healed. Amen. And it says, follow peace with all men, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And then it says specifically, looking diligently. In other words, paying close attention, lest any man fail of the grace of God. As offense comes, people fall of thousands. People fall quicker by offense than they do anything else around the church. Constantly, people are offended. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. Bitterness. It's one of those things that will eat you up. Uh, you know, they used to say about a, uh, you know, a young boy or that was growing, he'd eat you out of house and home. I'm going to tell you, the root of bitterness will eat things out of you that you can't afford. The, the, as offense is, is taken, and when somebody's walking in that, it's going to take them places they really don't want to go. And you and I, if we find ourselves lucky enough to be maturing in the Lord, we ought to put ourselves in a place where we can help such a one not help them be turned out of the way, but help them be restored and reconciled to the Lord. Amen. And if we don't, what we're going to find is the root of bitterness springing up in them. And therewith, many end up defiled. Mm -hmm. Not just one or two. Mm -hmm. Offense as it comes, it tears everybody down. And the reason it's so important, Justin, if somebody gets offended and they come to you, you don't pick that up. At that point, you're taking offense of something that's not even yours. The person who got offended can get it fixed, and you're left carrying some baggage for something you don't even know what you're carrying. Mm -hmm. It's such a dangerous mm -hmm. place to be is trying to be offended. Uh, and, and, and people 
I, I think there are some folks that get up in the morning looking. Well, I wonder if anybody from that church over there is going to call me today. I broke my toenail yesterday. And the thing is, is if you as a mature person in Christ know that, the best thing you can do is get up and say, hey, how are you today? Make a straight path. Make it an easy path. So they can be healed mm -hmm. rather than turned out of the way. Amen. But it's like people say, oh, Amen. that's not my job. No skin off my uh, neck, no skin off my teeth if they fall by the wayside. Mm. We, we, we come up with the... Uh, Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. Am I my brother's keeper? Preached a message several years ago. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. You are your brother's keeper, according to Jesus. Brother, neighbor. He just, a neighbor, a neighbor or your brother can be folks you don't even know. Yeah. Just laying in the gutter. And everybody that knows them is passing them by. And, and, and it is up to me to look over. It is up to me when I see somebody... Uh, Falling, when I see somebody in a bad place, when I see somebody who's offended and who by and by has either been offended at the word or by something someone said or done, it is my job, it is your job, to do everything you can to bring reconciliation to that. Not let them be turned out of the way. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 says, if you see a brother overtaken in a fall, in other words, if you see him falling by the wayside, yeah. if you see him by and by offended, if you see him struggling, ye which are spiritual. Now, for those of us that's received the Holy Ghost, that would be you. And for us as we mature in the Lord, that would definitely be us. That ye which are spiritual seek to restore such a one in a spirit of haughtiness, in a spirit of ugliness. No, it's in a spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. There's a there is a level of response that comes with maturity that's more like Christ than it is. See, the world wants to crush you and keep you crushed. Mm -hmm. The Lord wants to see you where you're at and say, I see. Yeah, I see. You, you said right. You're not married. You have been married five times and you're living with a man you ain't married to right now. But go thy way and sin no more. Mm -hmm. he, he, Jesus recognized. He didn't brush aside the fact that the woman was a sinner. He recognized it, he identified it, he called it what he was, and then he told her, go thy way and sin no more. Mm -hmm. And there, there, was, there was such a spirit of, in him of wanting to elevate her to a place different than where she's been, mm -hmm. to make a straight path for her. Hey, wow. I see where you're at, but let's make a straight path. Go and sin no more. Don't do that anymore. And, and, and that if we, I'm not saying when I say make straight paths, I'm not talking about pet somebody and feed them sugar till they're in a diabetic spiritual coma. But I am talking about point of the way, then assist. Put, put, put the shoulder, sugar put the shoulder coma. down. Let them lean. Let them lean yeah. on sugar coma. Uh, learn, learn how to assist in that, lest you yourself end up. There is a level of defilement, though, that comes from offense. That goes way beyond the one offended. Yeah. That's the reason we need to look not to be offended. And we need to look not to offend. Because those two things have a far reaching effect. Many are the Bible. Many fall through that. When one falls there's always the husband or the wife. Then there's the children. And then there's mama. And then there's the three friends that were coming with them. And then there's this. Yeah. And then there's that. Before you know it. Yeah. Many are defiled through something that could have been easily fixed by someone <coughs> who is spiritually mature mm. enough to recognize it and address it. I, I'm going to give you this. 
And if you'll learn how to do this, it'll help you help others. If you would learn how to fall on your own sword in every area except truth. If we'll learn how to fall on our own sword and make it easy for someone to come back in every area but the truth of the Word of God. In other words, fall on your own sword for personality conflict, for something said that you don't like, something done that you don't like. Any of the, never compromise the plan of salvation. Never compromise the truth of the Word of God. But look to compromise in every way you can as far as making someone's pathway straight for them to return to the Lord. And ye which are spiritual. I keep coming back to that because I've seen people over the years and especially people who had some years around the Lord and around his ways and around his church. Suddenly they've elevated themselves to a point where they seem to be able to one that has the day of reckoning with someone. Pastors, elders, people who've been around the church 30 years, suddenly are looking at someone that's just come to the Lord and they're elevating their level of accountability and they're going to cause some things that, no, no, you know, I, I, I keep going back through here and I don't see where Peter was set down for two years. I see where he denied Christ and 50 days later he preached at Pentecost. Amen. I see where Paul killed people over and over and over yeah. in the name of the Lord. To the point that if he rolled up in here, you'd look at him like Osama bin Laden. Because that's what Osama bin Laden, in the name of his God, yeah. he's killing people. Yeah, that's that's, there, there's no, we'd be looking at Paul that way. Mm -hmm. And when we understand that, and, and we really look at what that is, it really doesn't give us any room for any of us to be looking at mankind and looking down. The only time you should be looking down at somebody is when they're laying on the ground at your feet and you're reaching to pick them up. Amen. The only, other than that, every time we look at somebody, it needs to be trying to find a way to elevate them, trying to find a way to lift them up, trying to find a way to, to make their path straight back to the Lord. You know, the Bible, all throughout the New Testament, it talks about to keep yourself from offense. Let offense not be named among you. Uh, let the ministry not be blamed. You know, I, I, I know that throughout my 51 years around the church, I've heard the ministry blamed for a lot of things, and it was true. Now, I know, I know there's a lot of preachers that like to say they know, you know, you know they pull that one scripture out. Um, what is it? Do my prophet, touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Well, the reality is, you know, there's a whole lot of folks that ain't acting like God's anointed, and they're not the prophet of God, and they acting like that they're God himself. And, uh, but they pull that scripture out, and you're not supposed to say anything, nobody's supposed to address nothing, that's a bunch of junk. Uh, and yes, the Lord can handle business with those that are uh, in authority over people, but the scripture plainly says, give not offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine of Jesus Christ. There, there are some things, uh, and, 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 and the Lord does care. He, he doesn't want those things to be going on. He doesn't want someone causing offense, but he really doesn't want us to take offense either. When someone is offended, they join the 4-H club. They're hurt, then they hate, then they harm, then they go to hell. It's a, it's a vicious cycle and it looks to replicate itself like the waves of the ocean that crash on the sea and return to the ocean. 
That's exactly the offense looks to replicate itself in the offender and the offended. You go back to the offender and the offended. The offender becomes the offended, the offended becomes the offender, and it's a back and forth, never ending, vicious cycle looking to defile everyone. Mm -hmm. And frankly, when trust is violated, when things do really happen, there seems to be no incentive to restore relationships. You which are spiritual, be the one. Be the one that looks past what happened, what was said, and look to restore. In so doing, you'll be Jesus. And you may be the only Jesus some folks ever see. But most people, when they find themselves in a place of being violated, there's no incentive there for them to restore. There's no incentive once you've been violated. You, it's that, well, they did it to me once. They won't get the opportunity to do it to me again. Well, I don't know how many times they plucked his beard, spit in his face. You know, I had a preacher one time, my pastor, said, you know, if they hit me with a right, the Bible says turn the other cheek. Let them hit that one and let them smite you on your left also. And he said, it doesn't say nothing about what you do after they hit you twice. You know, well, and the reality is, it does say something. It says, if, if they do you wrong, 70 times 7, that we're to forgive. Uh, for the, and that's for the same offense. If you look at what that is, that's someone who over and over and over in one day is kind of doing the same thing and that they're asking. And what we need to understand is the attempt of us to restore, the attempt of us to forgive is not even for them. He forgives them. The forgiveness that flows from me and you is for us. The reconciliation that we're trying to facilitate, that's for us. And as we do what we're supposed to do, Christ is formed in us. We're a partaker of his suffering, therefore we might be a partaker of the things he says he won't share with another. He said, you'll be a partaker of my glory if you're a partaker of my suffering. I'm not talking about suffering for what you want to suffer for, but if you're suffering for him, in his name's sake, in his principles. Bible says you'll be a partaker of his glory also. When people are offended, their soul is wounded. And then much like when you are wounded in your body, there's such an opportunity for infection and toxicity. It becomes a breeding ground for defilement. The reason, and now you know why I said I want to say a while ago. When I said, you know, the devil attacks a lot of people with this right here, and there's a reason why there's not a whole lot of people here tonight. It's because the message tonight is one that if people could get a hold of it and get some understanding of it, that when you allow your mind and your soul to be offended that you elevate. We, we can look at it through the physical body. When you allow that wound to be open, there's a level of infection or the, uh, the opportunity for infection. The opportunity for toxicity to set in, for it to cause harm to several members of the body. That's what people fail to understand as they want to hold close to themselves their offense. It becomes the thing that there are people uh, that, that if you don't speak to them, there are people that if you speak to them too much, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't matter what it is someone's looking for to be offended, they will find it. James chapter 3 verse 2 says it's a perfect man that offends not in word. In other words, a thoroughly mature man, not perfect as without error, but perfect as in mature and thoroughly complete and who has learned self-control, who does not offend in word. 
Psalms 119, 165, I've already quoted. It says, Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall. Don't be offended. And don't be the offender. I want to read the passage of Scripture from Matthew 13 that I was discussing about the Word of God. But he that receiveth the seed in stony places, and that I'm telling you, the hard places of our heart, when the Word of God comes forth, and it comes in contact with the hard, stony places of our heart. It finds a little place and it nestles in. The same as he that heareth the word and with joy receives it. I've seen people who were happy when they heard a word that was even against what they thought. They even amen it. They jump up and down about it. And they receive it with joy. Yet hath he not root in himself but endureth for a while but when tribulation and persecution arise because of the word by and by he is offended I see it almost every time we come to church the offense of the word the offense of Jesus being who he said he was he is a stumbling block and a rock of offense. You know, in one place the word of God says, fall upon the rock and be crushed so that the rock doesn't fall on you and crush you. There's a, I, I, I want to throw myself on the rock and on its mercy right now. I'm not looking for the judgment of that rock. But the word of God is going to be the very thing. Jesus said it. I myself will not judge you. My word will. That's what Jesus said. And, and the very thing that could help people, the very thing that could empower people, the very thing that could bring correction, which brings growth, which brings strength, which brings fruit, the very thing that could do all that is what the devil works in people's hearts. When you come to the house of God, don't allow yourself to be offended by the word. Don't allow yourself to be offended by what people say or what people do. Don't give up your power. You have the power over whether or not to be offended. You have the ability to exercise temperance, which is self-control. There are people that know what bothers you. Most of those people don't have the Lord. How are we to affect those that don't have the Lord if we act like those that don't have the Lord? But since we have the Holy Ghost dwelling within us, the very thing that Satan is trying to offend us with. Suck it up and let that thing bring forth fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, temperance. And if, we, if we look at those things and we, and we have the under, the Bible says you're not ignorant. Of Satan's devices. If you know that offense is going to come, and that one place it's going to come is through the word, the other place that it's going to come is through people, then if we understand that, if, if we see that, and we're not ignorant of how he operates, then we need to act like we're not ignorant. We we need to, with understanding and with maturity in ye which are spiritual, then respond in such a way. 
If, if the church could just get this principle. We, we have people that go to this church that are offended daily over nonsense, over things that in the scope of eternity don't matter at all. Amen. But it causes such fear and trepidation and anger and doubt that the devil can get us to concentrate on that and not the kingdom of God. Amen. Not the fruit of the Spirit. If he can get hey, if he can get me offended, I'm not going to pray. I'm going to be hindered in my prayer. I'm going, if he can get me to be offended, I'm not going to come to church when the word of God that's going to get presented is the very thing that's going to bring things to life mm -hmm. in my situation. Mm -hmm. He's doing everything he can to keep me from getting those things <laughs> which I need to get. Mm -hmm. And if we would just un understand that, that the word says you're not ignorant of his devices. And if we're not ignorant, then let's allow the word of God to come in to take depth of root and to bring forth fruit. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Say, why is there such a difference, 30, 60, 100 fold? Well, it's how much access I give to the word of God. The seed is the only thing that can bring forth fruit. What's the seed in that parable? The seed is the word of God. How do you get more fruit? So more. So the word of God in my life and my ability to not be offended by it, my ability to obey it, is the very thing that brings forth 30, 60, 100 fold. It's not if I put $100 in offering. It's what do I do with the word of God? If I do the right thing with the word of God, my tithes and offerings and my giving, all that will take care of itself. But a $100 bill in the offering is not going to bring forth 30, 60, and 100 fold. Not from the Lord. Scripture says if you sow to the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, you shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. The principles that are involved in the Word of God are the things that we're looking to have in our lives and that we're looking to obey in our lives. So don't offend and don't be offended. Bow your heads for just a second. Lord.